Okay, folks, listen to me. It's really early in the morning. And I'm like, I haven't even had a coffee yet. It's not even in there. It's just my cream. And it's just my coffee. Not a hug in a mug yet. I gotta tell you something though. I'm about to do something. With a fresh pork picnic roast. And if I don't take the time to show you what I do with this. And how I can make something be so delicious that you're going to want to make it like often. You can get to see how I make some more of these other savory things when I have to make them with meat that I'm going to do. So y'all remember my seasoning sauce video. Don't mind that noise. That's a kettle of my hot water that I need for my coffee because my eyes need it. So does my brain for that matter. Anyway, you guys all remember that beautiful sauce I was telling you about that I make for my salad dressing? That I let sit and just absorb everything? Well, I made it. I made a big bowl of it. I could add more olive oil to it, which I'm going to do. But I'm going to put this baby all over that pork roast. I'm going to take an onion. Actually, you guys, it's called a fresh pork picnic hawk removed. I don't like how that sounded. Anyway, so these are my ingredients. I turned my oven on to 325. I'm still trying to function without my coffee. Maybe I better put this on pause for a minute because if I don't have one or two sips, I'm going to be like this. I don't feel like being like that. I feel like being like this. So, I'll be back in one minute. Okay, you guys, I have my coffee. My goodness, I need my coffee in the morning. I'm sure a lot of you do too because it's so lovely, oh my goodness. I hear all the birds singing this morning, it's so beautiful. Listen, the reason why I wanna do this roast is because I do a lot of other creative cooking that has a lot to do with sweets. But I really wanted to do Something that you could see how I make that's really, really savory for a meat. And I made this for a few people too, and they, they really enjoy it. See what happens? It's kind of like the brain fog goes away after a little bit of coffee, and then I feel so much better. Just realized I had no makeup on. This is how early in the morning it is for me. Okay, guys, Pam, 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 Pam. Bring that sucker down just a little bit. A lot of fat's going to come off that picnic uh, hot shoulder here, thingy me jiggy. But I want to show you what I do. You guys, I got some garlic and I chopped the garlic up just like that. Just chop it like that. What I'm going to do with it. So I'm just going to lay it on the bottom here. A lot of people end up poking garlic in with flavor. I'm going to tell you something. What I've learned cooking is when you want to infuse something, people even use needles. I used to have one of them too, like a cooking needle where you could infuse the sauce in it. I'm going to tell you something. When you put flavor in an olive oil, so you're going to lay some onion down here too. I'm going to show you this pan in one second. The reason why I'm putting this down like that is because it's going to flavor the pork as it's cooking inside. Kind of like a roll of dinner, folks. Okay, let me move this out of the way. I'm just thought of that. Are we going to be for a pork 
Hancock. This is what I do with this. Okay. First, I've done that just in the area where the roast is going to go. And I'm going to take this roast and I am going to kind of open it up a bit. I just want to open it up a little bit. There's a reason for this, and I'm going to show you in one second what that reason is. You're not really butterflying it, but you're kind of butterflying it because you just want the flavor to get in the meat. Okay, so I've just cut it open like that, okay? Now, that secret sauce that I get you guys to make, that's my favorite thing in the whole wide world that I created a long time ago. You guys, don't touch your meat with your spoon. You don't want to cross-contaminate, okay? But I just want you to put this on your meat, just like that. Just put it on there. Don't need too much of the other fixings on there, and I'll take some of the oil. Just take some of the oil, just like that. And then, you guys, can't touch anything else now. But I just want you to squish that inside of here and rub it all over this loin. The flavor of this pork shoulder picnic hawk, when you take it out, you know what? You're going to be amazed. You didn't have to infuse anything because the oil's already infused because it's been sitting for 24 hours with all those yummy flavors in them, which is gonna make this just so delicious. And I want you to take that sucker, I want you to flip it upside down, and it, just because you got the oil on your hand, rub it over top of that whole pork. Now you know what? A lot of people will take this part off I'm going to tell you something. Pork rind is so delicious, the crackling when it's done right on these roasts. Do not cover that sucker, please. Do not cover it. This is so easy. And once you've done this, look at, there's a little bit of that goodness still on there. Just put it right in. There's one area where it is, and you can just kind of squish it right in. I'm going to wash my hands a minute because it's really important that you salt the top of that, that hawk. Take a minute because my hands were so oily. It's really important now. Now I'm going to be touching it again, but I just want to get all that oil off because I have to touch the salt. And I forgot to take a little container out in a dish so that I can actually touch it. Okay, you ready? So where's my kosher salt? Because this is the salt I want you to use. I want you to use this salt. Use that on top of your rind. The oil's all over top of it. And I know you guys always are used to seeing me with this. Well, this is okay too. Okay? I just want you to sprinkle this on here. I know it's going to seem like a lot of salt, but I want to tell you something. Salt is really important when you want to make a really good crackling, just to let you know. You don't have to put too, too much on. But for some reason, it just makes it so lovely. I just, I'm going to show this to you so you can actually see the, the little chunks of the kosher salt when they're on here. Salt is so amazing for bringing flavor out. Not only does it draw moisture out, but it cures and it makes it so beautiful. Okay, folks. That's what I do. You put that amazing sauce on here. Put this in the oven at actually 320 for two and a half hours. And then after two and a half hours, it goes in at 365. 365, I'd say for, I'd say another good 40 minutes to make that crackling really nice. But I'm going to show it to you. 
and I'm going to show you what happens to transform this beautiful thing into something so delicious with my secret sauce. A lot of people have a lot of ways to make this out. People make, um, what do they call that? Where the pork is shredded. Well, it's shredded pork and you have it on a bun. Well, folks, new variation for you. Try it, it's so beautiful. You can have roasted vegetables with this and just have an amazing gravy keto style by using uh, um, a little bit of coconut flour and like a quarter teaspoon of uh, arrowroot, but I can make that today with this video. I think I'll add it with it just so you can see because there will be some juices from it. And I want to show you the crackling too. But this is going to be a long haul. So I'm going to enjoy my coffee now. I wanted to show you what I prepare in my kitchen in the morning for making a lovely, lovely meat dish. And my family loves it. I've made it a couple times for other functions and... Sometimes it's okay to try something new. I'm going to tell you that secret sauce of mine. Pretty amazing on a lot of things. I'm going to share them with you. I developed that about 10 years ago. Still want to go on Dragon's Den with that, but... Uh, still make it as lovely gifts for people who enjoy it. And that's kind of like a nice little treat to do. So I'm more than happy to share it with y'all. So good morning. Good morning to y'all. I'll catch up with you later this afternoon when I show you how lovely that roast is doing and I'll merge a couple videos together. But the reality is it started early in the morning because the crackling's going to be the best then. You can just leave it. No fuss, no muss. Five minutes. Five minutes. Maybe seven. Okay, you guys. Love you. See you soon for the finished product. Okay, folks. It's done. Listen to this. Listen. You want to know why you put kosher salt on top of this sucker? You play a drum on that sucker. This is called crackling. Listen. I know a cousin of mine who'd go mad over this. Might not like it if I mentioned her name, though. But you know what? Here's all the goodness that came out that was underneath it. You can mulch that up and mix it all up and put it in something else if you want that you want to cook. But you know what? I just wanted you guys to really have a peek at how beautiful this is. So I'm going to lift it up and I'm going to show you. That is the beautiful pork picnic roast. For the last 20 minutes, I put the oven on. 450. I think I got the temperature wrong when I mentioned that last part of the oven temperature for the rind. So it's really important, okay? 450 for the last 20 minutes. Your smoke alarm might go off, but it doesn't burn, see? So this is how delicious this looks. Folks, I'm going to cut into it just for you. And I'm going to let you hear the crunch. Because I think it's important to hear the crunch. It's the best part, the grappling. Okay, so here it goes. I break a little tiny piece off. This is what I like to do best. Oh, baby. Mm. Listen to me. It's so heavenly. Oh my God, it's so good. I gotta try the meat now. That was a crackling. This could be really dangerous for me, folks. Thank goodness I'm on keto is all I got to say. And this meat, look at that. It just falls right off. You want to add a little goodness to that, boy, oh boy? I'd say take a little piece of that crackling. And some of this little onion. I know this is terrible to do to y'all. Being as we're on COVID and everything. But if you don't see the look on my face after I try this, I'm telling you. Look at that. Look at how yummy that is. Folks, that's how it should be done. And now I'm ready to feast. And I know my sons are too. They're being very quiet in the other room. That's okay. They're going to be my taste testers. 
I'm going to be yours. Ready? Oh my God. You guys. If you ever wanted to venture into keto, I know I shouldn't talk with my mouth full. I'm so sorry. But I can't help it. If you ever want to venture into keto, I'm telling you. This type of beautiful cooking with a beautiful salad with some of that sauce on it. At least four and a half cups. I'm getting distracted because that flavor in my mouth is just like popping and it's so delicious. I wish you could all try it. But listen again. I know you're going to love it. So that's one of the really yummy things that I make that I've shared with you. And the next thing I think I'm going to share with you is how I make a keto chicken korma. So, thank you for watching. I put this in this morning and this is how lovely it turns out. And you don't have to look at it again until after it's done and just enjoy eating it. So if you try it, have fun feasting. It was really nice doing this kind of delectant video with you guys to show you how I cook some of my main things. Okay, take care. Love you all lots. Happy keto cooking. Oh, and don't forget, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's got all the ingredients on the bottom of it and exactly what I do for your instructions. So subscribe. Have a little bit of fun. Come in my generic kitchen. It's pretty damn generic if you ask me. But it's a lot of fun in here. And I like it when you guys come to visit. Okay, take care.